Hello everyone, my name is Tim and today we're going to talk about Flame Sensi Flame Sensing We're going to talk about Flame Rectification In Flame Rectification I'm taking an AC signal that is being sent to the flame sensor. I'm converting that to a DC signal, pulsating DC signal. Let's take a look. My flame sensing, I can have a single, both spark ignition and flame sensor rod in one. I could have hot surface igniter where one of the lines is flame sensing. In this case, on this module, I've got a separate spark igniter and a separate flame sensor. Let's take a look back at the board. I need to simulate this. Let's say I think I have a bad gas valve, I have a bad module. I need to simulate flame rectification because what I've done is I've looked at my wiring diagram and all of the other sensors, I've verified that they're good. Into this module, generally, I just have binaries telling me flame rollout is good, I've got power to the module, my high temp limits are, are closed, all of that. Assuming all that, or I've jumped that circuit out, and now my module is actually powered, and all the other binary inputs are closed. Now the only thing I have to do is simulate that I actually have a flame, and I can keep that gas valve on. Okay, so in order to do that, in order to change it from this AC signal to this pulsating DC signal, I add a diode. Okay, the anode is the plus side, the cathode is the negative side. This is a diode. This bar right here represents the cathode. In this case, for this testing, I'm going to send that straight to ground. The other side represents the anode. I put a switch in it. And this is going to wherever my sensor line is that's used to sense flame. A diode. A small thing right here. This is actually simulating flame rectification through the flame. Because as I pass an electrical signal through a flame, it's going to convert it to that pulsating DC signal. This is my ignition module. This is my spark igniter. My flame sensor I've got connected here. You'll have to find out on your particular module where your flame sensor input is. I'm going to come out from my flame sensor, wherever, whichever wire it happens to be, go through my switch, go out of the switch, through my diode, Cathode is on the bottom, closest to the green wire, going to ground. Now the cathode is grounded, the module is grounded, I've got my flame sensor just waiting. So, if I turn this on, I've got spark. Now the only thing the module is waiting for is the gas valve to energize. So it's got to have flame sensing. This represents, this light represents voltage to the gas valve. Okay, so if I turn this on, gas valve is energized. It thinks it has flame rectification. It thinks it has a flame. It has verified it. If I turn it off, the gas valve goes off. If I turn it back on, it's going to sense that it has flame again. The gas valve is now energized. Flame rectification. Most modules that require flame rectification the other inputs are simply going to be binary. You can use jumper wires. You just have to get power to the module and all the inputs for flame sensing um, are going to be flame rectification for these particular modules and all I need for that is a diode. Just make sure that all of your other binary inputs, whether it be a rollout switch, high temp limit, whatever it happens to be, those are physically indicated that they are actually closed or whatever condition they're supposed to be for that particular module, including pressure switches. So 
once I've got all these inputs required to bring on the module set, these binary inputs are all set to the way they're supposed to be, through jumper wires or just that they're, they're enabled, the only thing I have to do is configure it, the setup, so that when I flip the switch, that it thinks it has flame rectification, that it thinks it actually has a flame. And I can do that with our diet. I hope this has been fruitful for you. I hope that I'll see you again. This is Tim, out.